That contains an addictive substance. Oh, I agree. Welcome to the ultimate countdown of The Sopranos' most unforgettable lines, straight from the mouth of the formidable Johnny Sack. If you're a fan of wit, wisdom, Spielberg, and you want to sanction a hit on Ralph Cifaretto, I want you to sanction a hit on Ralph Cifaretto. You're in for an unforgettable treat. From slicing insults to chilling commands, Johnny Sack leaves a lasting impression on every scene he graces. What's this, the fucking UN now? But which of his lines reigns supreme? Get ready to dive into a world of mob mastery as we unveil Johnny Sack's 14 best quotes ranked. Johnny Sack, the man with the voice as smooth as a perfectly aged bottle of scotch and a demeanor that could make even the toughest mobster quiver in his boots. You rang his line, and like clockwork, you'd hear that iconic line. Speak. Now, was it scripted genius or just Vincent Curatola doing what he does best, improvising like a maestro? We may never know for sure, but what we do know is that it's etched into the annals of television history. But here's the million dollar question. Have you ever dared to channel your inner Johnny Sack and answer the phone with that same cool, collected tone? Speak. Come on, spill the cannoli in the comments below. In a scene straight out of a mobster's playbook, Tony Soprano, the legendary boss of the Jersey family, arranged to meet Johnny Sack, the newly crowned boss of the New York family. The king of New York. As Tony approached Johnny, the tension crackled in the air like a well-lit cigar in the hands of a wise guy. Johnny, with his signature sharp gaze, wasted no time cutting to the chase. I want you to know this is the last time we'll meet like this. It's undignified. Interestingly, the next time Tony and Johnny decided to meet to discuss business, the meeting took place on Johnny's doorstep. As we remember, the agents appeared on the horizon and nabbed Johnny Sack, and Tony had to rush out. It's undignified. In the world of wise guys, Tony Soprano calls the shots. And Christopher Moltisanti, well, he's like the eager pup trying to earn his stripes. Oh. So when Tony decides to bring Christopher along to a sit down with Johnny Sack, you know it's gonna be a roller coaster ride. Tony's first command to Chrissy, keep it zipped. Say nothing, cause you said the wrong thing. But of course, Christopher, with all the subtlety of a bull in a china shop, assures Tony that he's got it under control. You got it, Tony. Cue the eye rolls from every Sopranos fan watching. Oh, shut up! Why? Shut up! At the meeting, things seem to be smooth sailing until Christopher decides he's the next son to Zoo, or Prince Machiavelli of the mob world. Have you thought about this? Maybe you let him keep Lorraine, and you take a bigger piece of his Florida shit. Giving Johnny advice? Bad move, Chrissy. Real bad move. Ho! Oh. Johnny, bless his temperamental soul, loses it faster than Polly loses his hairspray. You know, it wasn't long ago I remember you used to wait in the car. And as far as I'm concerned, you should still be there! Thankfully, Christopher's got a hint of sense left in him and clams up. Because if Georgie from Bing had been in Christopher's shoes, let's just say he would have been sleeping with the fishes next to email's sorry grave. I'm sorry, T. I just thought I'm I... I'm gonna un would you just fuck up! Johnny Sack gets out of the car, looking more serious than a funeral in the rain. He's there to chat with Tony Soprano. Tony, ever the schemer, pitches his big idea. What if there was a power-sharing situation? Power-sharing. Divide the Lupertazzi family power between Johnny, Angelo, and Carmine Jr. You all were in charge equally, but no major decisions can be made without a majority of two. Johnny immediately fires back. What's this, the fucking UN now? It's like Tony just suggested they start running the mob like a bunch of bureaucrats instead of the hard-nosed wise guys they are. Johnny's reaction? Pure gold. What the fuck? Hey, this way you're not such a big target for the feds. Just goes to show, you can take the mobster out of New York, but you can't take New York out of the mobster. I forget it. Forget I said fuck it. Fuck that. Ah, uh, remember the days when Junior took the reins? He was stirring up trouble left and right. One of his infamous moves was trying to squeeze attacks out of Hesh. Are you telling me that since I'm the new boss, I should tax Hesh? Now, Hesh wasn't one to sit idly by, so he ran straight to Tony for backup. Tony, being the savvy guy he is, decided to loop in Johnny Sack, knowing it'd add some weight to their argument. In a slick maneuver, they set up a meeting where Hesh, with Johnny's backing, pleaded for a tax reduction. And you know what? It worked like a charm. Junior had to back down a bit. After the dust settled, Johnny dropped that classic line. Tony flies on you, they're paying fucking rent. <laughs> in a bar in Little Italy, Johnny Sack, a heavyweight in the mob world, spots Donnie across the room. 
Now, Johnny's not in the mood for laughs. Ralph Cifaretto, another player in the game, had recently cracked a tasteless joke about Johnny's wife, Ginny, and Johnny's not the forgiving type. Donnie, right? John, how you doing? As Donnie's chuckling away, little does he know the storm brewing. Johnny, fueled by rage, follows Donnie outside. And before Donnie can even comprehend what's happening, he's getting a beatdown of a lifetime. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, Johnny, in a twisted act of mockery, decides to relieve himself on Donnie, all while jokingly offering to buy him a drink. Let me buy a drink. It's a brutal scene. One that leaves Donnie battered, bruised, and with some serious nerve damage. And as if that wasn't enough, poor Donnie, who was already shouldering the responsibility of caring for his mother, disappears from the scene entirely. Remember that time Johnny Boy went full-on berserk mode and pounded that poor sap from Ralphie's crew into next week? Hospital-bound with a noggin resembling a smashed watermelon. Classic Sopranos drama, right? So there's Tony strolling into Johnny's turf like he owns the place, which, let's face it, he pretty much does. Straight to the point, Tony's all, What the f***? And Johnny, with his poker face on, starts spinning a yarn about Ralphie dipping his fingers into the Esplanade honeypot. But wait for it. He drops this bombshell. This fucking house more creative than Spielberg. Sure, we all know there's more to the story than meets the eye, but hey, let's keep it in the family. I hear Jenny Sachs getting a 95 pound mold taken off her ass. <laughs> Johnny Sack, simmering with rage like a pot ready to boil over, strides into Carmine's lair, seeking retribution for the vile jest Ralph Cifaretto tossed at Jenny's expense. Johnny, fueled by a desire for justice, confronts Carmine demanding the green light to erase Ralph from the equation. I want you to sanction the hit on Ralph Cifaretto. What? Are you fucking kidding me? But Carmine, the seasoned Don of Dons, sees the bigger picture. That word's not good enough? Not if you want him clipped over it. Ralph, despite his penchant for trouble, is a cash cow. So Carmine proposes a different kind of settlement. Cold, hard cash. It's highly inappropriate. You want? I'll demand he's taxed. Ralph would line Johnny's pockets with a hefty sum, a band-aid solution for the wound inflicted on Ginny's honor. But Johnny, a man of principle, can't stomach the thought of mere dollars bandaging the gash in his pride. I'm making a point. I'm talking about my wife's honor here. My honor. And just like that, another legendary Johnny sack line is etched into Soprano's lore. But when Carmine slams the door on the idea of Ralph sleeping with the fishes, Johnny's fury erupts like Vesuvius in full fury. Johnny underscores that cash won't solve the problem, posing the following rhetorical question. 200 grand for insulting my wife. What's next, come on? You get the fuck for a million? Now let's break it down. Sure, Ralphie was stirring up trouble left and right, but was it worth risking a full-blown war over? I mean, we've seen enough bloodshed to last a lifetime, am I right? On the other hand, Johnny had his reasons and loyalty runs deep in this world. So should Carmine have given the green light? What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. In the tumultuous world of the mob, where loyalty is as fickle as the flip of a coin and respect comes with a hefty price tag, Johnny Sack stands as a beacon of composure. That is until the infamous episode, The Wait, where even the cool-headed Johnny finds himself boiling over. It all starts when Ralph Cifaretto, the loose cannon with a mouth as sharp as a stiletto, dares to crack a fat joke about the weight of Johnny Sack's Rubenesque wife. I hear Jenny Sachs getting a 95 pound mold taken off her ass. <laughs> now, in any other scenario, this would have been grounds for an immediate ticket to the big sleep. But in the twisted world of The Sopranos, things aren't ever that simple. Johnny, steaming with fury and itching for revenge, knows the rules of the game all too well. He can't just waltz in and order a hit without the blessings of the big bosses. So, he calls for a sit down. I want satisfaction. As the tension crackles in the air, Johnny lays it all out on the table. He's had enough of the disrespect, enough of the backstabbing, and damn it, enough of the jokes about his wife. I hear Jenny Sachs get a 95-pound mold taken off her ass. But there's a catch. He won't spill the beans on who tipped him off about Ralphie's loose lips. You tell me who told you about it. We'll bring him in here. And without concrete proof, the bosses won't greenlight a hit on their prized earner, Ralphie. Again with the money? Yeah, again with the money. He knows in his gut that Ralphie deserves a dirt nap, and he's not shy about letting everyone in the room know it. But in the end, the almighty dollar reigns supreme. So Johnny Sack, the man who usually plays his cards close to his chest, finds himself at a crossroads. In a world where even the strongest bonds can be shattered by the clink of a cash register, 
Johnny learns the hard way that in the Game of Thrones, it's not always about who's right, it's about who's left standing with the fattest wallet. As Johnny himself said, I mean, what happened to this thing? For God's sake, we bend more rules than the Catholic Church. In the world of The Sopranos, every twist and turn seems to converge at the infamous Ginny Sachs mole joke. I hear Ginny Sachs getting a 95-pound mole taken off her ass. <laughs> <laughs> Picture this. Johnny Sack, poised to tackle the day's tasks, hops into his car, but just as he hits the road, a sudden change of heart diverts him back home. Well, it's not a sudden urge for a meatball sandwich, but rather a curious case of domestic drama. Johnny stumbles upon a scene straight out of a soap opera. There, in the dimly lit basement, sits Jeannie, his better half, in a peculiar position. What are you doing on the floor? Nothing. I was getting the laundry together. Suspicion hangs thick in the air. And what's that scent? Not the aroma of fresh baked ziti, but the scent of deceit. You lied to me! You lied! As Johnny inches closer, his eyes widen at the sight of a box of forbidden treasures. Candy. Oh. 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 The very same candies Jenny swore she'd forsake in her battle against obesity. It's a betrayal of the highest order, a violation of the sacred diet pact. Johnny, with righteous indignation, fires the first shot, decrying Jenny's lack of willpower and the blatant disregard for her solemn oath. This is how you try? I'm not out of the house 10 minutes? But Ginny, never one to back down, retaliates with a jab of her own, pointing out Johnny's own vice, his stubborn addiction to cigarettes. You were the one who was supposed to quit smoking and didn't! To which Johnny rightly remarks that nicotine's an addictive substance. Nicotine's an addictive substance! Oh, I agree. In a dramatic turn straight out of the Sopranos script, Johnny Sack found himself at the center of yet another high-stakes dilemma. It all went down in the long-term parking episode, right after the chaotic aftermath of Billy Leotardo's demise. Whatever happened there? 47. He was a fucking kid. The Shah of Iran was demanding Tony Blundetto's head on a silver platter. But here's the kicker. Tony Soprano and his crew were playing a high-stakes game of hide-and-seek with Blundetto, and nobody had a clue about his whereabouts. This sent Phil into a full-blown frenzy. The safety of Tony Soprano's family was suddenly on the line, and Phil wasn't mincing words about it. As Phil Leotardo stormed out of the room after hurling insults at Tony Soprano's crew, Tony, fuming, turned to his trusted ally Johnny Sack, questioning the necessity of Phil's verbal assault. Is that fucking necessary? He shouldn't even have been here. He's got a right to be here. Tony, feeling the weight of the situation, sought to distance himself from the chaos his cousin that Animal Blundetto had unleashed. The cousin acted alone. I did not sanction this. He declared, trying to salvage what was left of his authority. Johnny Sack's response dripped with sarcasm. The lone gunman theory. He quipped, drawing a parallel to the infamous JFK assassination. Tony, feeling the pressure of Johnny Sack's scrutiny, defended his cousin's erratic behavior. You know how close he and Angela were in a can. He flipped the fuck out. Attempting to justify the inexplicable. But Johnny Sack wasn't one to let Tony off the hook easily. When he whacked Joey Peeps, what flipped him out that time? He countered, his voice tinged with accusation. Caught between a rock and a hard place, Tony could only offer a frustrated retort. What do, you, what do you want, John? What do you want me to say? And Johnny Sack's response was as blunt as it was chilling, his demand cutting through the chaos like a bullet through glass. I want your cousin on a fucking spit. He bellowed, leaving no room for negotiation. Just when tensions were reaching a boiling point, Johnny Sack delivered a bone-chilling ultimatum to Tony. You either deliver that prick to my door, or I will rain a shitstorm down on you and your family like you have never fucking seen. The stakes couldn't have been higher, and as any Sopranos fan knows, when Johnny Sack speaks, you better listen, or suffer the consequences. In the lush, manicured backyard of Johnny Sack's mansion, the air was thick with tension, thicker than the cigar smoke wafting lazily from Johnny's lips. Seated on a plush patio chair, Johnny was attempting to soak up some much-needed tranquility when Ginny, his Rubenesque wife, sauntered over with a request that would shake the very foundation of their mob world. It's a sale, John. I need clothes for Italy. Italy. The mere mention of the word sent a chill down Johnny's spine. <laughs> Memories of Carmine Jr.'s lavish Italian escapade flooded his mind. I spoke to Nicole Lubertazzi. When she and little Carmine stayed at the Hassler last year, he loved it. But Johnny wasn't about to let Ginny's innocent request unravel his carefully laid plans. Plans that involved breaking free from Carmine Jr.'s shadow and seizing control of the Lupertazzi family with an iron grip. His patience wearing thin, Johnny snapped, 
his voice rising to a crescendo. This fucking wallet is tied to the goddamn desplanade, goddamn it! Very observant, the sacred and the propane. If you just finished watching that video, you're probably feeling like you just had a sit down with Tony himself. But hey, if there's one thing we can never get enough of, it's those unforgettable lines from Johnny Sack. So, if we missed any of his golden lines, feel free to drop them in the comments. And hey, while you're at it, who should be the star of our next video? Let us know in the comments, and let's keep this soprano train rolling.